Hey everybody, welcome back to session four of CPT for PTSD. Uh, my name is Steve, I am your host uh, as usual, and uh, we're going to we're gonna kind of build off of session three this week, and if you remember from session three, we had these beautiful ABC worksheets. These things were fun, weren't they? Well, not, not, not that much, but... Um, it almost seemed like they got old after the six days that I was doing them, but they come in really handy moving forward. Um, so coming into this, you're, you're done with your ABC worksheets. I know that makes everybody happy, but don't get ahead of yourself. There's more homework. So <clears throat> session four, you're going to come into it, and then you're going to take that written out um, log or description of your traumatic event, <coughs> And you're going to read it out loud. You're going to read it to the, to the therapist or the counselor. Um, at least this is what happened when I went through CBT. Um, read it aloud. And that was a tough thing to do. Um, it really, you know, when you, when you write something down, you're like, okay, well, I'm just I'm writing. I'm concentrating on writing. When you read it, you're like, yeah, I'm reading it to myself. When you read something to somebody else, about something that's deep into your memory and your thoughts and your feelings, it can get difficult. So um, don't be afraid of it. Just be aware that that can be difficult. All right, session four. This is the stack of paperwork I have from session four. Uh, don't be afraid of this either, but be prepared because you're going to do some work. All right, so session four is examining the index event is what it says on my on my worksheet overview, but really it's reviewing the traumatic event. Um, just making sure that you're remembering all the ideas, the feelings, the, the thoughts, all the things that you have about that event and how it affects your current life. Then, um, after you're done reading it, you'll start getting some handouts. And there's two handouts that are, yeah, there's, there's two handouts really that are going to be very helpful to you during this session. Sorry, I was looking over here at my uh, overview. The first one is the level of responsibilities. And the level of responsibilities handout is, what was your role in the traumatic event? And what are the facts? And you'll cover, you know, hey, the responsibility, the unforeseeable responsibility and fault, right? Um, the unforeseeable, there's no way to predict it would happen, but that leaves grief and sadness. Uh, responsibility. You played a role, but you didn't get the intended outcome. That leads to regret. Fault and blameworthiness is there is intended harm, an intended outcome, and then there's guilt. <laughs> there's a lot of those things that uh, will play in pretty well to what you're about to do. Then we get into the replacement of the ABC worksheets. And the replacement of the ABC worksheets are things called Challenging Questions Worksheets. It's two pages. I don't know which way to do this. There's the first page. There's the second page. Um, questions. <clears throat> uh, what are the questions? These are questions that are used along with your stuck points log. Your stuck points log is going to be the, the driving force. I know I've said that before, but um, get used to it because uh, I'm probably going to repeat it again. Um, Here's the deal. You're going to write down a belief that you have, and then you're going to answer questions about it. What is the evidence for and against this stuck point? So one of the stuck points is um, uh, if I fly, oh, yeah, it, it, when I go to the airport, I have those issues when I go to the airport. Um, there's more to be afraid of post 9-11. Um, having to do with flying, et cetera. And then they say, what are the evidence for and against this stuff point? So, you know, the evidence for that is, yes, we have to be more alert after 9-11, especially when we're flying. Um, the evidence against that is that there hadn't been another attack like 9-11 like since then, um, but it's because we're paying more attention, right? Um, and then is your stuck point a habit or based on facts? I'll let you figure that out. Um, and then in what ways is your stuck point not including all the information? Like my stuck point was there's more to be afraid of post 9-11 with flying. And um, what, how is it not including all the information? 
once 9-11 happened, there was tons of security put in. We all know what TSA is like going through an airport. It's a nightmare to fly. Um, there's a lot more scrutiny, a lot more security that goes into it. And the other fact is that nothing's happened since then. I mean, we haven't had one of those issues since then. Can there be another one? Yes. But has it happened? No. So that's evidence that, you know, hey, we're, we're missing something there. Um, does your stuck point include all or none terms? And, and that means is it all in or nothing and not kind of in the middle? Like there, if it was said that there could be an accident post 9-11 uh, with flying, then, you know, that's 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 true. That's that's an easy one to do. Um, but there will be or uh, uh, there's more to be afraid of or that's kind of an absolute. You know, you're, you're making it absolute. You're saying, yes, I have to be terrified of this. And yes, I have to be, you know, I have to be on my toes, etc. cetera. Um, so those are all the none terms. Does the stuck point include words or phrases that are extreme or exaggerated, like always, forever, never? Um, you know, all of those. You answer out that. In what ways are your stuck points focused on just one piece of the story? Uh, again, 9-11 hasn't happened since 9-11. So I'm focused on the event that happened back then, not necessarily everything that's happened since then. Um, where did this stuck point come from? Is it a dependable source of information on stuck point? Similar to what you answered in the ABC questions. Um, how is your stuck point confusing something that's possible with something that's likely? We talked about that in the all and none kind of scenario there. So it's uh, things can get confused pretty big. And then in what ways is your stuck point based on feelings rather than facts? And this becomes a little bit more difficult. You know, if there's a mixture of facts and feelings, you have to kind of be able to disseminate and, and kind of separate those two and go, okay, here's the fact of the statement. Here's the fact of the stuck point. And then there's the feeling that goes along with it. Um, so you'll have to be able to separate that out. And then in what ways is this stuck point focused on unrelated parts of the story? And again, for the 9-11 example, unrelated part of the story, well, it hasn't happened since 9-11. So it's not really quite as bad as, as, you know, I make it out to be in my head, et cetera. And so what you'll get is you will get several handouts, um, samples, samples of how to fill these worksheets out. You'll get two samples, or you should get two samples. And then there's a guide that tells you in more depth ways that you can answer these questions. And when I say more depth, I mean some serious more depth. So please, I, I encourage you to read through these. They'll help you understand the why of what you're about to go through. And then you will get six copies of these two pages. So 12 total pages, but six copies, one for each day in between your therapy sessions. Again, your therapy sessions are on Thursdays. That means you're gonna get one for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, um, or Tuesdays, sorry. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and you don't have to do it on your days of therapy. So um, try and get all those done. Uh, I know it's gonna seem repetitive to you. I know that it seems like this may not be, you know, uh, something that's gonna help you long term. Um, just go with it. Uh, it will be worth it long term. Uh, some people like to answer questions. I'm just looking through a couple of mine. I'm going to pull one up. Um, so some of these, you know, the answers are, are pretty easy to look at. Um, some of the answers I have in here are longer than others. Some are very simple answers and some are, you know, a little bit more complex. Um, get into the detail like you normally would uh, anything else. If you were taking a test or if you were writing a letter to somebody or if you were trying to explain this out loud, sometimes it helps or it helped me to speak aloud what I was doing just to myself. Um, I didn't film it. I didn't do anything like that. But I would say, okay, um, what's, what's a belief that I have, right? And a belief that I have is there's something wrong with all these planes, Um and then what is the evidence for and against this stuck point? Well, things go wrong with planes. There's always something wrong with planes. That's why airplane mechanics exist, right? That's why safety people exist. 
Um, and what is the evidence against? Well, flying is one of the safest ways to travel, et cetera. Um, and is it habit or based on facts? This is more of a habit with the exaggeration of a true factual event. And, and that's how I've learned to answer these questions and to get the most benefit out of doing these. Now, this is step two in a three-step um, worksheet pattern that you're getting into. The ABC sheets were easy to do. They were quick. There's not much to them. Then you get into these challenging questions worksheets, and they go a little bit deeper. And then in the next couple sessions, you're going to notice that we're going to get into some much tougher things. Um, these are going to be really the, the meat and potatoes of finding the way to really start turning you towards it's okay, right? Um, I really hope that these videos are helpful. Uh, I'm hoping that, you know, you're getting something valuable out of them. And uh, if, you, if you have gotten something valuable out of them or not, please comment, like, share the videos, uh, hit subscribe, because I will have the rest of these. Right now I'm trying to post once a week. Uh, I've got some family events coming up, so I'm recording a little bit in advance of the time that I'm going to post. But I will be around answering comments. If you have questions for me, etc., cetera, uh, let me know. Don't forget to check the description for links and especially for the link to the packet that I will send out so that everybody has a, a way to pull down that packet in PDF format, be able to look at it on your phone or your device or whatever, print it out, whatever you want to do. So um, that's session four. Um, it, it's it's going to ramp up a little bit from here because that, you can tell two pages, a little bit more work every day. So now you're doing 10, 15 minutes of work a day. And 10 to 15 minutes is really where it's all going to stick to. Even when we get to the more difficult sheets or the more difficult for Steve sheets that we go through next, it, it, it still only takes 10 to 15 minutes a day. And when you think about that, 10 to 15 minutes it's not that big of a deal to get that 10 to 15 minutes. You can do this, you know, while you're you're sitting down and having coffee in the morning or you're sitting down for dinner at night, get to the table, pull these worksheets out, boom, knock them out, done, 15 minutes. So, all right, thanks everybody. Again, comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.